and I want you to live the dream because I'm not living the dream because I'm special. I'm living the dream because I was obedient to the call of the dream. So I want you to leave here today thinking about what is the dream for you? What is God's dream for you? What does the Creator's dream hold for you? So often we spend our lives wishing and hoping and hoping and wishing and desiring things. This is what I know for sure. You don't get what you wish for. You don't even get what you hope for. You get what you believe. So what is it you believe and know to be God's dream for you? So I live in the dream. I'm living in the space of the dream. The dream's good, dream's good. The dream is greater than anything that I could have imagined. You know, when I was a little girl, my father, on Sunday mornings after church, he was a deacon, so he thought he had to say goodbye to every single person. We were the last car leaving the parking lot in the green Oldsmobile. And we would drive through the white people's neighborhoods. And I used to dream the dream, driving through the white people's neighborhoods. We'd drive through the white people's neighborhoods and you'd see their fancy houses. Some of them had gates, but all of them had trees. When I get rich, I'm gonna get me some trees. I'm not just gonna get me, everybody wanna get cars and pocketbooks and shoes, but I want me some trees. So as life would have it, I was standing in my kitchen window about three years ago in California making coffee in the morning and I was looking out the window and I saw the six trees. But listen to me. I was making, making, making the coffee. I saw the six trees. I went out on the porch to actually count the six trees. And this is what I noticed, that I could dream the six, but beyond the six trees, in my kitchen window are 3,687 trees. How do I know? Because I had them counted. I had them counted. Because so I said, I want to know how many trees out there. I dreamed the six. That's as much as my, 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 my small mind and my imagination could hold for myself. I dreamed the six, but God can see beyond the six. And see beyond the six because there was a bigger dream for me and I'm here to tell you there is a bigger dream for you essence there's a bigger dream and so the key the secret the magic is to surrender to God's dream for you to quit fighting against and pushing against and disallowing against and resisting against and trying to tell the creator, the universal forces, divine intelligence, what you are supposed to do and get still and know for sure what his dream, the dream is for you. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Now my little eight-year-old brain didn't really fully understand the power and depth of those words, but they sounded good enough for me to write them down and put them on my mirror. And those words, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul, became a mantra for me. What it said is, I am responsible for the choices that I make in my life. I am responsible. I am responsible. So obviously I grew up and was better able to articulate what those words really mean. And I discovered in physics class, those of you who remember physics, the third law of motion. You remember what that is? The third law of motion in physics says, for every action, it's called Newton's law, and it says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So what does that mean? That means everything that you are putting out into the world, every action 
bam, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It means no matter what you do, the energy of what you do, what you say, and most important, the energy of who you are is going out into the world, into your home, into your relationships, and that energy is always coming back to you. You are responsible for the energy that you are pulling out into the world because that very energy, bam, is coming right back to you every single time, whether you believe it or not, because it is law. It is law. It is law that what you put out into the world is coming back. Now, in our country and many countries all over the world, they call this the golden rule. The truth is, whatever you do is already done. The truth is, so when I learned this, that I am, I am the person who gets to control what comes back to me based upon what I'm putting out. Everything you try to do is already done. So when I figured that out, oh, what I'm putting out is what's coming back. Let me get real clear about what it is I'm putting out. Real clear. So I read a book about 1989 called Seed of the Soul. And in that book, Gary Zukav talked about the laws of karma of the laws of cause and effect the third law of motion and in that book he talked about how intention your intention is always one with the law meaning before you even think about a thing you have an intention for the thing and that the intention is going to determine the outcome. That's why the same people can go to the same church service and somebody walk down the aisle just to be seen to put some money in the church and somebody else who just goes and just has a little bit to offer. The intention with which you give the intention with which you serve determines the outcome. So when I figured that out, I went, whoa. I changed everything I did on my show. I called in the producers and I said, from this day forward, I will no longer be speaking to the KKK. I will no longer be speaking to people who are fighting each other in a way that it is damaging to the character of myself and other people who watch. From this day forward, I am only going to do intentional television. And they're like, how are we gonna do that and still win? The reason we remain number one for 25 straight years is because every single day, I would have a pre-show meeting and have the producers come in and state to me, what is your intention? How do we want to use whoever is on this show, whatever is happening on this show, to serve the audience in a way that fulfills the mission of uplifting, enlightening, encouraging, as well as entertaining. And if it doesn't do that, then I can't do it. I can't put my name on it. So. I use this principle of intention for everything. I don't do anything without thinking about what is the real reason? What is the real motivation? What is the energy of my intention that's going to go into my thoughts and action and then be returned back to me? Do not allow yourself to be marginalized and defined by other people's agendas and intentions because the power of your story lies in your personal intention. So it is my intention, my intention to fulfill the dream of the creator. It is my intention to live to the highest calling and be pressed to the mark of the highest calling that I have come to do. And when you can ask the creator, ask that which made you you, what is your dream for me? I guarantee you, 
instead of you trying to define the dream what is your dream for me if you're able to lean into the dream that the universe and all the forces of 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 light and love and power and grace by all the names that we call God has for you nobody can touch you nobody can touch you